Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. It's good to be with you today. I want to begin a reflection on this passage from John chapter 1, beginning at the 29th uh, verse, uh, with uh, uh, a group that came immediately to my mind as I prepared earlier in the week. It's an Australian alternative metal band formed out of Sydney, New South Wales in 1997. All of those statements date me immediately. They are called the Sick Puppies. And they're, oh my gosh, somebody said, it's shocking. Uh, I think it's meant, I think the name's meant to be shocking. Uh, Their debut album was entitled Welcome to the Real World, 2001. They sing in this song, I walk the line of of the disappointed. I celebrate when I'm in pain, my heart and mind can be disjointed. I build a bed in this hole that I've made. You won't be thinking of cars when you're on your deathbed dying. They howl out. You will only be thinking of what you're paying for. What are you searching for? What are you praying for? What are you coping for? What are you hoping for? What are you hurting for? And the answer after each one of those refrains is love. What are you searching for is the text for my passage. These are the words of Jesus to those who stand before him. What are you searching for, I might ask you today? Now, part of the twist of God's narrative from the beginning to the end is so so often we are all searching for the wrong things. This is an old truth. It's actually one that's carried out in myth and legends as well as the gospel. We as humans look for the wrong things. And we do so, as the song from 1980 says, looking for love in all the wrong places. Johnny Lee sang that song until he died at age 23 drug overdose. You see, I think it's easy for us to acknowledge our cultural problems of seeking the eternal in the material when we want to focus on addictive substances in the world. Nobody, though, really has to tell you or I about lives ruined by a comfort sought in a bottle through painkillers or uh, the end of a white line. That's just some real nasty stuff, and I bet all of us have a friend or a family member who's gone through that. It's easy to see that, looking for love in all the wrong places. But more often than not, the real ways we get off track is that our expectations or the the thing that we're looking for gets kind of subtly satisfied by our longing soothed by a good job, a regular job, good money, happy kids, nice vacation memories, experiences of mountaintops visited and the exhilaration of a game well played or amusement park, all money, well spent. I was watching over Christmas a, a movie and a person asked, why does the devil always persecute the poor, never the rich? 
The response was, because the devil's got the rich. You see, I think it's those subtle things that we're meant to be more watchful over. These are not eternal things, but they are the things that feed our appetites and our emotions. These are the feel-good things. They are the ones who kind of placate us into some path of least resistance. It's as if looking for love is what we do, but we get satisfied by momentary joys, fleeting happiness. Yet the solution, the solution for the divine longing and the divine search is remarkable, as it turns out, because it's right there in front of us all the time. That is our passage points out. Not to be satisfied with what you consider magic or foresight or all of this wisdom that you've been heard. I'm right here. What are you searching for? Did you come to me, Jesus says, because I knew who you were from far away. Over these past two Sundays, we keep being invited to refocus our lives to Jesus. It's just not that hard. The problem is we're satisfied with our lives. We're satisfied the rest of the week. You'll leave here and be just fine. And there might be some ups and downs in it, won't there? But what Jesus is saying, it'd be a whole lot better if every day I was at the center of your life. And that you could put down that longing and that searching once and for all. Take me on. Try to live like I do. Try to follow. Try to meet the needs of others as I do. Try to be with the people as I am. I'm the one born in a manger. I'm the one with the bright star. I'm the one that philosophers and kings come out to seek and the shepherds adore. Who are you seeking after all? I'm right here. What other signs do you need? He's the one who, with whom God is well pleased. He's the one John the Baptist says, we've been waiting for this guy. He's the one who invites us to follow. He changes our names. Not because he does amazing feats of strength, but makes us wealthy. He certainly doesn't make things easy. That he does not promise. He does promise that his burden is light. That's because you don't have to do anything to get his love. But loving's hard. The monk once told me that if you follow Jesus, he's never going to tell you how hard it's going to be. But you're going to have plenty of love to get through whatever it is. He is the bodily form of God, one who is love. If you've been seeking love, if that's what you're looking for, then he's the one. G.K. Chesterton famous Anglican says, it's not that Christianity is that difficult. It just is not often tried. In Epiphany, we are invited this season after Christmas, this very short little season. You and I are invited to remind ourselves that at the center of our lives, at the center of our dinner tables, our breakfast tables, at the beginning of our day, at the end of our day, In the middle of our day is Jesus Christ, light of the world, that we are invited to follow and be like him in every circumstance. Well, you know, I don't know. I'm going to tell you this. It sounds really good. You're like, this seems so easy. This isn't even a sermon because we know all this already, right? How'd you do last week? How'd it go? You and I both know we failed. I failed at least a dozen times and probably more by losing track, by forgetting, by letting the world tell me how it's supposed to be, by listening to other voices. 
It's so easy. It's so easy. And so you have to come here to be reminded of the most simplest thing. That God is love and God wants you to be love in the world too. Now what's going to happen next is we're going to confirm some people. But as we do that, we're all going to stand and we're going to pledge our faith and our lives to Jesus Christ. It's, it's an Episcopal altar call. Make no bones about it. You're going to stand up and say, I believe in Jesus. I believe that God created the world. I believe that Jesus saved me from my sin. We're going to stand up and say all those things. A lot of people say, oh, Episcopalians, they don't have it all. We're going to do it right now. And all of it. And it's forced. We make you do it because we give you the words. But this is an opportunity in this beginning of the new year, the beginning of the week, of every week when you stand and say the creed, to start over. To say, I recognize I spend 99% of my life looking for love in all the wrong places. And the hope that I no longer have to hustle for is right in front of me all the time. And it's Jesus. It's just quite that simple. And it doesn't get much more difficult than that. So let us stand. Well, let us stand if you're being confirmed. We're going to get to your bar. But when we stand, think about the words you're reading and saying, you're not making promises to me, you're making promises to God. It's a very serious moment. I want to invite you to take it and see the opportunity that lies before you and the ways you're invited to live and be in the world. And try it. Or you'll fail. But that's what next Sunday's for. You can come back in here and start over. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.